I'm not gonna lie everyone, this one got me a little choked up. Ryo Takamasaki is still releasing chapters of his Rockman EXE manga to this day, and we just got a new one based on the 20 year flash forward from the end of Battle Network 6. The best part? It's fully translated and you can check it out for free on the official Capcom website. Link is in the description. While we don't really get to see full visuals of the original gang all aged up by 20 years, we do finally get confirmation of what Patch Hikari looks like. We might have had one from the Operation Shooting Star vs. manga since this guy shared Patch's Japanese name, but this one is 100% confirmed to be Lan's son. I kinda like the other design though, since it looked like a blending of Lan and male, and not just a slight edit of Lan. Either way, this short manga gives me all the feels with all the various throwbacks, and is such a great way to ring in the upcoming Battle Network Legacy Collection as we celebrate over 20 years of memories with these games and manga, as well as the anime. No matter what, we're always connected, and we'll see you on April 14th. I was replaying Mega Man Battle Network 2 on the Legacy Collection, and I found something that I remember seeing a while back, but never had the opportunity to record it until now. In the Mother Computer, the purple official navy that's helping you fight off Shadow Man's goons actually uses the wrong palette during the scene where the officials rush in to defend Mega Man. See, here's the purple navy by themselves, and here's the same navy in the cutscene. See how the color's off? It looks like it's using the palette that's given to the criminal navies in this game at Battle Network 1. Not sure how this slip happened, but I just thought it was kind of funny. This is in the other versions of the game outside the Legacy Collection, by the way. Is this in any way linked to the mythical horned pink navy? Nah, probably not. I think I discovered a new glitch or exploit for Battle Network 2. I was playing it on the Legacy Collection, with Buster Max turned on, and I finally reached the World 3 area, the main post-game. However, I forgot about the Protecto mini-bosses, which have to be destroyed in one strike and all at once, or else they'll respawn. If the countdown reaches zero, they'll explode and damage you before respawning and doing it again. But I actually managed to defeat some of them without destroying them all at once? Buster Max allows me to one-hit kill most enemies, and I think by destroying one, but then opening the custom screen in a very particular window, it prevents them from respawning. I got this to happen a few times and only tested it up to World 3 Area 2 because I still need the double S license before proceeding further. Has anyone else managed to do this or something similar yet? Someone let me know because this is news to me. One glitch in Battle Number 2 that I found a while back is that sometimes my enemies just up and die for no apparent reason. This is on my old cartridge that I've had since it was released, and if you watch the footage, I'm just spamming the Heat Guts charge shot, and even though I'm not dealing damage to the enemy, they are just deleted for no reason. If you look closely, it looks like my buster is hitting something, but it's invisible. I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. It usually only happens if there's a virus from the Scuttle family on the field, and I haven't gotten it to happen outside of the World 3 areas. I have not been able to replicate this on Emulator or on the Legacy Collection, just on my old cartridge. This may be unique to my game, and it could be a case of where the cartridge is actually damaged since it has accidentally ended up in the washing machine a few times when I was a kid, and there's a similar glitch where stepping on certain panels would damage me during the Planet Man fight. I haven't been able to replicate this glitch while recording though. Does anyone know what's going on, or have you experienced something similar? Please let us know in the comments. When going over the early concept art for characters in the EXE series, we can often see how designs progressed, for better or for worse. One case where I feel that the concept art was infinitely better than the final product was Cross Fusion Nightman. Here's the final version, and here's the concept art. Just about everything about this design is better. The colors are more faithful, it has the shield like Night Soul Mega Man does, and with this one, it looks like Princess Pride could actually move her legs. The final version looks so constrained, and the colors betray the Navi it's based on. However, I have a hunch that the reason they went with this design is because it's less detailed and it will be easier to animate. I can't blame them in that regard, since Cross Fusion Nightman was brought in about halfway through the series, and by the end of stream, we had 13 Cross Fusion Navvies in the same scene. Since Pride and Nightman were basically glorified background characters at this point, and their primary attack method was just swinging around a ball and chain, or shooting it like a missile, it would make sense for the animation team to give them a simpler design to save money while animating their action sequences. Still though, I hate that this beautiful design went unused, and I'd love to see it repurposed in the future. So, fun fact, Mark Gotha, the voice actor who played Mega Man X in X8, Maverick Hunter, Day of Sigma and Command Mission, and Dave Pettit, who voiced Sigma in X8 and Epsilon in Command Mission, have another iconic rivalry from a different franchise. In Mobile Fighter G Gundam, Gotha voices the main character, Domon Kashu, while Pettit plays Domon's nemesis and former mentor, Master Asia. I think this pairing is perfect for the X and Sigma dynamic, because I see a lot of similarities between the pairs. 
Both X and Domon were thrust into difficult battles that they weren't initially prepared for, then became battle-hardened and full of righteous fury. Master Asia and Sigma also have some similarities in that they're both trying to wipe out humanity, but from some angle their intentions aren't entirely bad, with Master Asia wanting to revive the Earth with no humans to damage the planet, and Sigma wants Reploids to reach their maximum potential. X8 Sigma is definitely more shouty than Master Asia usually is, but Pettit's performance as Epsilon still carries the same energy. I can see you are determined, but Scarface, I will not run from this fight. They will tremble before the power of Epsilon. Then why don't we put an end to this decisive battle to determine which one of us is right? I finally got around to playing Battle Network 6 on the Legacy Collection and experienced the official English translation of the Boktai crossover side quest. During the cinematic that plays after the first attempt to fight the Count, Django runs over him with his motorcycle before the game returns to the overworld. However, in the Lexi collection, during this scene, Django calls the Count by the wrong name, referring to him as Zap. This is a very strange error. I mean, we do have the character Count Zap in Battle Network 1, and his wife Ann Zap is in Battle Network 6, but how did they make such a blatant mistake here? Django didn't even call him Count Zap, he just says Zap. To make this even funnier, Count Zap's first name is Jack, and in the English GBA version of BN6, the Count's name on his unused battleship is Hackjack which is a mistranslation of Hakushaku, which is the Japanese word for the Count. So I guess Anne's husband is Count Jack Zap, while Django's rival is Count Hack Jack Zap. I guess that explains why the Count has lightning powers here when he didn't in any of his other appearances. That still doesn't account for the fireballs though. Does anybody here remember Vega's Legion, or the channel it was posted under, Vega.exe? The channel hosted a variety of content, from OST remixes to digital art and sprite animations, and a lot of it was focused on Mega Man. What I remember the channel most for is this content centered around the channel's namesake, the Mega Man Battle Network OC, Vega.exe. There are some standalone videos where we get to see Vega's powers using its Mega Man, as well as against Dr. Wily and an upgraded version of Alpha. But best of all was Vega's Legion, a series of videos where Mega Man joins up with Vega and the other GX navvies to combat the looming threat of Ryu, who I assume is another one of the creator's OCs. Sadly, the most recent episode was posted back in 2011, and the latest video on the channel was uploaded in 2012. Part of me is worried about this channel disappearing from inactivity due to Google's new policy starting in December that entails removing Google users who have been inactive for more than two years. The notice was very vague though, and it said that YouTube channels would be exempt, but I'm not certain. Either way, if you enjoy Battle Network fan works, then I highly recommend you check out this channel and the Vegas Legion series. Quick note, there is no episode 2, and as far as I recall, there never was, even back in the day. I seem to remember Vega mentioning the project not playing out in a satisfactory way, so the story skips from episode 1 straight to episode 3. For anyone curious, I'll link both the channel and the series in the description. It makes me sad that the series will never be finished. But there were some crossovers between Vega and Tamias222, who is still active to this day, but has shifted more towards Yu-Gi-Oh! content and rarely posts Mega Man videos anymore. Does anybody remember Vega's Legion? Did you watch it back in the day or more recently? And what are some of your favorite Mega Man fan animations, series or one-offs? Leave your thoughts in the comments below.